Welcome, travelers, to my realm of nightmares. Allow me to be your personal assistant. Come in, take a seat, get comfortable. For when you step into my realm, there's no stepping out. Hello and welcome to the very first episode of the Book of Fables. In this series, I am reading fables that are in the public domain. That I will then create an original horror story incorporating elements of the fable into the story. I hope you enjoy the story. And if you do, please let me know in the comment section. The North Wind and the Sun The North Wind and the Sun had a quarrel about which of them was stronger. While they were disputing with much heat and bluster, a traveler passed along the road wrapped in a cloak. Let us agree, said the Sun, that he who is stronger can strip the traveler of his cloak. Very well, growled the North Wind, and at once sent a cold, howling blast against the traveler. With the first gust of wind, the ends of the cloak whipped about the traveler's body, but he immediately wrapped it closely around him, and the harder the wind blew, the tighter he held it to him. The North Wind tore angrily at the cloak, but all his efforts were in vain. Then the sun began to shine. At first, his beams were gentle, and in the pleasant warmth after the bitter cold of the north wind, the traveler unfastened his cloak and let it hang loosely from his shoulders. The sun's rays grew warmer and warmer. The man took off his cap and mopped his brow. At last, he became so heated that he pulled off his cloak and, to escape the blazing sun, threw himself down in the welcome shade of a tree by the roadside. Gentleness and kind persuasion win where force and bluster fail. I woke in pitch black darkness. It took me a few minutes to fully understand my situation. But as my situation became more apparent, I began to panic. The back of my head was killing me. Rubbing it, my hand returned wet and sticky. Even though I could not see what it was, the copper smell that came off it gave me a pretty good guess. I thought back to how I got here. My memories were hazy. All I could recall was walking down the street after getting off work. A vehicle pulled up behind me, the door slid open, and then nothing. As I was lost deep in thought, a voice tore me out of my head. Anthony, you're awake finally. I thought maybe I had killed you with that blow, but never mind that. We have a long road ahead, one that you could easily avoid just by telling me your deepest, darkest secrets. What the hell are you talking about? My deepest, darkest secrets? What do you want to know? That I cheated on my wife with a woman from work? And that I stole from my job just to make ends meet because they pay me shit wages? There, is that what you want to fucking know, you fucking psycho? I screamed at him in a panicked tone. I figured if I could spout off a bunch of bad shit, he may just let me go. Maybe this is how he gets off. A kink or something. But then, he spoke again. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Now, Anthony, I ask for your darkest secret. Not those you made up hoping I was a fucking idiot. Now, you can sit and think on your actions. I heard him flick a switch and a fan began to blow. Oh, by the way, you are currently in a meat freezer. <laughs> Have fun, TTFN, he said with a sick laugh. It was not that bad at first, but the room started to cool off. Then it got frigid in the room. I was not wearing warm clothing as it was early spring outside, but I pulled what little I wore around myself regardless. I sat there for hours, 
by the time the man returned. I was shaking uncontrollably. Now, Anthony, are you ready to talk? You and I both know what you did. Just admit it, and we can move on from this <laughs> unpleasantness. We just need a little information. Then this all can end. Doesn't that just sound so nice? <sighs> Fuck you. What? Why are you doing this, you, you sick fuck? Uh, I, I've done nothing wrong. <laughs> Let me go now. I tried to yell, but it came out as a weak whisper. The cold had taken the fight right out of me. It seems you are not ready to talk just yet. <laughs> well, never fear. I have much more fun planned for us right here. Next game lets us warm up a bit. The lights turned on. A man came into the freezer and lifted me up. I tried to fight, but my body would not follow my commands. He took me to another room with large lamps around a chair. I was tossed roughly into the chair and strapped down. Why are you doing this? What, what, what did I do? Oh, it is not me you inflicted your sins upon, but this is all happening to you by their command. Just imagine what your father thinks of his sweet baby boy. The condescension in his tone made my blood boil. Oh, good. It looks like there is fighting you after all. But let's see if we can make more than your blood boil. He said as he turned on six heat lamps and left me alone with my thoughts once again. After being left in the heat for several hours, I started to hallucinate things that could not be there. I saw my father... Maybe it was the asshole bringing him up. Perhaps it was the guilt from how we left things the last time I saw him. I called out, asking him for help. He shook his head and walked away. Blacking out, I was brought back to reality with a blast of ice water to the face. For the first time, I realized how thirsty I was. Water. <coughs> water. Please, give me water. I croaked out in a voice that I did not recognize. I heard him laugh and say, Ah, oh, are you thirsty? No problem. I'll give you a drink. He walked out of sight and then returned with a towel and tape. He placed the towel over my face, taping it in place. The whole time I was screaming, What are you doing? Three, stop. I didn't do anything. But he did not care. As I was screaming, water started to pour over me. I was coughing and choking on it. In between coughs and trying to breathe, I could catch bits and pieces of him taunting me. I thought you said you were thirsty. Why are you wasting so much of the water, you pathetic, insolent brat? He said it loud enough for me to hear. But the next thing I heard was three loud bangs and everything stopped. I heard footsteps running to my side. I felt him loosen my straps and I fell into his arms. I looked up and I managed to ask in between long gasps there, <gasps> Who are you? And how did you f find me? My name is Roland. Your mother sent me. I'm a P.I. She hired me to find you when you didn't return home. It took me several days, but I finally did. And thank God, it looks like he was about to kill you. What did he want anyway? Regaining my composure, I said, Can we talk about this somewhere else? Yes, yes, of course. Let's get you out of here. He helped me to his car, and we drove to his house, which was nearby. I sat by a warm fire, sipping chicken broth to recover my strength. That's where I told him everything. I told him about the argument my father and I had, how I shoved him to the ground, and when I did, he hit his head on the desk. When he did not get up, I checked for a pulse. Not finding one, I called a friend of mine, and we cleaned up the body. Dumping it in the woods just outside our family estate, tears were streaming down my face as I finished. Roland spoke up. My lad, that is an unfortunate and tragic story. Do you mind if I tell you a little saying of mine? He asked, and I shook my head. He continued, Gentleness and kind persuasion win where force and bluster fail. 
If you had shown your poor father a little gentleness, we would not find ourselves here, now would we? I looked at him confused. What do you mean? A dark shadow could be seen behind Roland's eyes as he spoke next. Oh, you have not figured it out yet, huh? You really are a slow child. You always have been. I know we haven't seen each other since you were young, but you still haven't recognized me yet? I looked at him more closely. Uncle Roland? Yes, it's me. And I have a message for you from your mother. She said for me to tell you, she said hello. She wanted us to get the information about where you buried your father's body. And only after we got the info did she order us to send you to meet him in the afterlife. I looked around the small house with a confused and shocked expression on my face. What do you mean? Us? You keep saying us, but it's just you and me here. The shocked look on my face turned to fear as I noticed his partner and the one who had tortured me walked through the door. You two? You two are working together? That's right, my boy. Tell your father Roland says hi, you piece of shit. A loud bang filled the room. Well, James, go call Alice and let her know where Richie's body is. I'll clean up her nephew's body. Tonight's story was titled Catch More Flies with Honey. It was written by myself. If you enjoyed it, please let me know down in the comment section below. Also, if you have not checked her out, Silent Composer is a brand new narrator into the horror community. She is a close personal friend of the channel, and she has narrated one of my stories, and she's going to be doing another one here in the very near future. So please check her out and let her know PA sent you. Hey, did you know I have merch? Well, I do. Crazy, right? But if you'd like to walk around, representing my realm, and gaining new travelers, the links to my merch store as well as all of my other social medias will be in the description below. As always, I'd like to say a special thank you to all my lovely Patreons. 242 Reads Rando Calrissian Seraphine the Midnight Bard Creepy Clown Girl Mia Mina Philia Noctis Hair Raising Narratives Spooky Boo Scary Story Time Lycan Trucker Nathaniel Nelson and Pimp Demon If you'd like to join these lovely travelers by the light of my fire you can do so by becoming a patron as well Just remember the support is always appreciated but never expected Please don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and ding that bell for future content if you're new, as it will really help push this video into the algorithm and helps the channel grow. But as always, travelers, once you step into my realm, there's no stepping out.